What's going on everyone, Honda Fit for Adventure here, and today we're going to fix the ER71 drive communication error on the Honda Moto Compacto. Now the ER71 message is caused by, but not limited to, a bad motor controller. An easy way to determine if it is a motor controller is to give the front wheel a quick spin. If the wheel does not spin freely while off the ground, it's most likely a bad motor controller. Oh you can confirm this by removing your front fender and unplugging the hub motor. With the hub motor unplugged, the front wheel should be able to spin freely once again. Now that we confirm that it is the motor controller, let's replace it. Now this is something that is covered under warranty, but I've heard some horror stories where the dealerships may hold your Moto Compacto hostage for quite a while. The Honda techs at the dealership are not fully trained to diagnose and repair the Compacto, so they have a tendency to leave them sit around for a while. You may get lucky and have a dealership that's willing to throw parts at it, but if you want to fix it yourself, it's going to be about $110 and 45 minutes to an hour of your time. Most of that time is going to be spent removing the panels off of the Compacto. I already have a video on my channel on how to remove the panels, which I'll link down in the description, so we're going to skip past that step today. Motor controller removal. Let's start by removing and detaching the cables. First, there's going to be two screws that we need to remove that secure the wiring to the black storage box. With the screws removed, we can now unplug all of the cables. If I remember correctly, we have the power cable, the charging cable, and the headlight on the one side, and then the display, rear brake light, another headlight cable, and one more additional wire on the right side. Let's scoot down a bit and disconnect our hub motor. With the Allen screws removed, separate the cable by pulling on the opposite ends. This may take a little bit of effort. Nice. Next, we're going to start removing some screws so we can access the motor controller. Let's start by removing four screws toward the front that secure the headlight in place. There will be two screws on each side. Once the headlight is detached, we can carefully remove the light and pull all of its cabling through.
After the headlight has been removed, you're going to remove approximately four more screws toward the front of the compacto. These screws secure both sides of the storage box together. Once all of the screws have been removed, we can now fish out the cables coming through the side of the storage box. Now we're going to remove the two screws that are securing the motor controller in place. Once the screws are removed, you can now remove your motor controller. Please note that you may or may not need to use a flathead screwdriver or trim removal tool to separate the tabs of the two halves of the storage box directly behind the motor controller. As you can see, mine just popped loose while removing the controller, so I didn't have to do that. Installing the new motor controller. The motor controller is an electronic device that is non-returnable. Before you accept your new motor controller from the dealership, I would advise to have a look at it before accepting the package. I was not impressed with the quality of the one that I received, and here's why. All right, so this is the new motor controller I just picked up from Honda. And as you can see, this plastic clip is further down, which really isn't a big deal. I can unclip this and scoot it down, but it kind of does make a difference. It needs to be about an inch down. As you can see in the storage compartment here, the motor controller sits right there. And then that inch is where the cable goes over and then the big plastic sits there. Now sliding the motor controller back into place was a bit tedious and tricky. First, make sure the tabs behind the motor controller are re-secured. Putting the motor controller in place and making sure that the tabs were secured took me about three tries before everything was seated correctly. Next, slide the controller back into place while feeding the cables through their corresponding holes. I fed my cables through the holes later, which was still possible to do, just a little bit trickier. I should've known. Once the motor controller was back into place and the tabs were secured, it's now time to put the headlight back into place by securing the upper two screws first. I almost forgot to screw down the motor controller. Now let's go ahead and reattach the hub motor. Now there are arrows on the plug to help you plug it in the right way. Once the hub motor is reconnected, go ahead and re-secure it back to the fork of the scooter with the Allen bolt. Don't forget to secure the ground connection. Here you can see me feeding the wires through after installing the motor controller, which is still doable, but not the easiest. Next, let's reconnect all the wires and clip them back into their secured locations.
Before I move on to the next side, I'm going to put the four screws back that secured the two halves of the storage box together. Now before you put the panels back on, I recommend double checking all of the screws to make sure that they're fully tightened. There is no suspension on the Compacto, so there is a possibility that they could vibrate loose. Just make sure not to tighten them down too much as they are only being screwed into plastic and you could easily strip them. This little doodad should be fed through the bottom hole and facing down if you haven't already. That's it, you've now successfully changed out your motor controller. Turn on the scooter and enjoy.